Tuka is a boy who never attracted attention, but when he was summoned to another world with his classmates, he had a sudden change of life, as everyone received high-level skills except him who was considered a failure, and sent him to a ruin where he would meet his end. But what no one expected was that this useless skill kept a dark secret, and in the midst of his despair Tuka reveals his true nature and decides to seek revenge against the goddess of this world and to follow this beautiful. Revenge just leave your subscription in addition to liking and commenting a lot that this motivates me a lot to continue with the daily videos, but now let's go to the anime. And we start with a boy getting beaten up by his father while his mother was watching TV. But this was a memory of Tuka who wakes up with the laughter of one of his classmates who was teasing the class representative, while Tuka thought it all started during a school field trip where all his other classmates kept their heads down, while the elite laughed at ease and the only ones who acted normally would be the sisters Takao and his apathetic teacher, and maybe if he tried to stop Oyamata he would look nice but it would certainly be nothing more than a gentle breeze, but even so Tuka asks the boy to return the girl's book making the boy question what he had given him and starts to mock the boy, and with his air of superiority Takuto orders him to return the girl's book despite not caring about what he would do with Tuka, but this scene was bothering him, so he should return Sogu's book, and with it the boy returns it to the girl and the other girls praise Takuto and that way they continue their trip with Oyamata kicking YSU's armchair, while saying that Tuka used to be Ariel, but at least he made an effort to create an unexpected event unlike a trash like him who acted, as if nothing it was happening, but the teacher decides to intervene and tells him to stop it, since if the boy finished himself it would be a problem, and if YSU decides to do it he should do it when he is not his teacher. But in the meantime Tuka thought about what Oyamata had said and agrees that he was right and at that moment it didn't even seem like him, but maybe it was the fault of that dream. But a light teleports them to a huge room leaving everyone confused as a goddess welcomed the heroes to the realm of Alien, where they would be the hope of this world and introduces herself as the goddess Viseus, and says that when the evil of the demonic empire arose they summoned heroes from another world and 200 years ago the efforts of the summoned heroes defeated this evil, but after so long the demonic empire resurfaced. And so she needed them as chosen heroes to lend their power again to this world while some thought that this was nothing more than a dream but the professor who had ulterior motives with the goddess asks everyone to listen to her, while Tuka noticed that all that was real including the goddess with golden eyes, but Takuto questions what would happen if they didn't help her and Viseus replies that way they couldn't return to their world since for the reverse summoning ritual a special element called essence of the demon. King was needed which was obtained in two ways where in the first it was necessary the heart of the demon king and in the second it would be by collecting the essence of the demon king released after his defeat by placing it in the crystal of that necklace which they deemed to be very convenient, but the goddess returns to ask them to save his world and Sogu asks how ordinary humans could do this and the goddess explains that they all possessed powers that other humans did not have or at least until they were summoned while Tuka wondered what that feeling was, but the goddess asks them to bring it and the guards bring a servant and a magical beast that attacks the human fiercely and Viseus defeats the monster with a fireball leaving everyone in shock and Takao Hijiri realizes that the best option would be to treat this world as something completely different from theirs. And the goddess decides to start evaluating the hero's skills and asks them one at a time to put their hand on the crystal that shone according to their skill and the goddess is impressed by the glow emitted by Oyamata, who would be class A making the boy excited, but when Takuto puts his hand on the crystal, it breaks leaving the goddess impressed, since he would be S ranked the most high, as well as Sogu and Hijiri making the goddess admit that. This would be the best summoning they had since they had 3 S rank while it was difficult to get at least one. But finally, it is Tuka's turn who when putting his hand under the crystal emits a purple light, that he notices to have been the weakest and the goddess asks the next one to go up ignoring the boy completely making him realize that he was nothing more than an extra, and would be treated in the same way as his previous world. After all it was just Mamori Tuka, who is surprised by the goddess saying that the glow emitted by YSU was the same as the hero of darkness, known as the strongest of all and the boy would be A rank, while YSU said he knew his time would come. And then everyone checks their status and the goddess seems to despise Tuka, while the boy noted that his exclusive ability would be to inflict status conditions being paralysis. Sleep and poison level 1 and the goddess explains that the exclusive abilities were special talents that only that individual could use and some have already received theirs, but could also awaken others over time and Oyamata gets tired of these explanations and the teacher tries to scold him but the boy tells him to shut up since in this world he was nothing more than AD rank while he was in A, but the goddess says that they should go to an important ritual and calls for Tukamomori and says that he would be of class either hero with the lowest rank in the place. 
And Tuka enters a magic circle, while the goddess said that in the past the lower ranking heroes were always an obstacle to the superior heroes, so after a certain time they decided to discard the lower ones which ended up causing shock to the other heroes, and even generated some fights between the stronger ones which ended up making them give a chance to the lower class heroes and this teleportation circle would take the weakest hero to a certain ruin, and if he survives and reaches the surface. They would not interfere and the kingdom of Alien would grant the right of this person to live freely making took a question, if the ruin was too dangerous which the goddess had no idea, but they sent many highly dangerous criminals to the place in addition to several failed heroes, and as an exception, she says the name of the ruin that was known as Ruin of the Discard, leaving Tuka distressed, he even asks the goddess to wait, since he had a unique status effect ability, which does not draw the attention of Viseus, who explains that this type of ability had no value. After all, it had an extremely low success rate and even if it is activated, it barely affected the low-ranking monsters. That is, his ability was a failed level and to make matters worse. He had a terrible status which was not a surprise since it was class, and then even when leveling up she couldn't expect much from his numbers, and Tuka says that she called him and turned him into a hero, and now she would discard him. And one of the students calls him a failure so they should end it soon by making the boy fall to his knees and YSU goes to him and asks if the boy was well making Tuka remember that he tried to help him when YSU had been beaten, but he didn't count on the boy being completely different, and with a disgusted face he questions how Tuka dared to call him by name, after all he had the worst rating, while he was a superior being, so he should show respect, doing his best to live with the little time he had, and calls him a discarded hero. So the goddess activates the magic circle and throws an item to the boy since each hero summoned received an exclusive item, and this pathetic leather bag would be his, and when he imbued mana in him the gem would glow, but Sogu interrupts her, and says that this was wrong and Mamori was their colleague, so they should free him but God punches the girl making her faint, and tells everyone to remember the vision of the hero discarded, since this would be the end that awaited those who had nothing, or rather, the losers, but they didn't have to worry, after all they were winners, unlike Tuka who would have a tragic fate, and Tuka calls the goddess cursed and tries to use his paralysis on her, who calls him insolent, after all, this would never work on a goddess and in addition she had a protective barrier called a dissipating bubble, which was activated constantly and provided absolute defense against status condition spells, making Tuka furious, but Takuto uses his unique ability. Draconic explosion on the wall, generating a mega explosion, and he says that he just wanted to test it, making the goddess ask him to be more careful and his colleagues start laughing at the discarded hero after this clear demonstration of power difference, while emanating his air of superiority, after all. If he he was going to disappear he should do it soon but the Takao sisters leave the room, while thinking they were all scum and the goddess asks if he would have any last word and when Tuka starts crying he remembers when he cried as a child and his inner self asked the reason for this and surely, he understood the reason since it didn't matter how much he represses himself pretending to be a harmless person, when in the truth was the complete opposite of what he pretended to be. So he should show everyone his true self that he has repressed for all this time and enraged Tuka sends the shitty goddess to hell making her angry, but she activates the magic circle while Tuka says that. She should be prepared in case he manages to return and so he is teleported. And he wakes up in the ruin of the discard, so he uses his mana in the magic bag to get some light and admits that this place looked like a cave, but what really makes him curious would be how a skull had been split in half, so it was obvious that there was something in these ruins. And the boy ends up slipping, which ended up saving his life from the attack of a monster that runs after him. While Tuka thought it was obvious that they were on different levels and admits that he was shaking. So maybe this is the real hostility and goes back to crying, while thinking that he was not sad or happy and considers the idea of being afraid, which he dismisses since it was an emotion that began feeling recently. So he was certainly frustrated, because this would be the end of Mamori. Tuka who did not have any weapons and only had his trash status and a failed ability, but Tuka begins to wish for power after remembering the hateful words of his former classmates and decides to use his paralysis that affects the monster, leaving the boy surprised and when he runs again, Tuka remembers that the goddess had said that the status conditions had a low success rate even with low-level monsters, but for sure that Minotaur wasn't low-level, so maybe it's a miracle. But Tuka encounters another monster and feels its pure hostility, and despite not knowing his reasons for attacking it he knew that the monster was hostile, and as he did not want to lose his life he returns to use the paralysis that again affects the monster making the boy realize that this had not been a miracle, and perhaps his ability is something completely different from similar spells, and when opening his statuses he notices that he possessed only one point of mana, after all he had used his ability on the goddess, the Minotaur. 
And this thing besides this stone of the item he had so what was left was only his MP out of the status adjustments, and maybe it's enough to activate his ability, and test the poisoning on the monster that starts to feel the damage leaving Tuka impressed, because maybe the success rate of his ability is incredibly high and not was affected by the monster's rating, and even begins to feel sorry for the creature despite it having tried to eliminate it, but maybe. It is the effect of running out of mana, and he wonders what would happen if he continued using his ability. But Tuka ends up being surprised by the Minotaur who had his paralysis effect ceased, and the boy thinks that maybe he tried hard, and if it was a normal cliché someone would come to save him and remember the cursed goddess saying that he hoped he would have a terrible end and his classmates laughing in addition to his father beating him, while his inner voice told him that he wanted to eliminate him, and as he was just a supporting player and not a hero or heroine, no one would save him and that's why he was determined to eliminate the monster, so he shouldn't trust or count on anyone, in addition to not creating expectations, since he should just conquer everything, and with a dark smile, Tuka starts his fight for survival, while in the depths of a forest an elf bathed. Tuka didn't know what could happen if his MP outside of the status adjustments was depleted, but he still uses his paralysis on the Minotaur, but the ability fails and he discovers that it would not be possible to apply the same ability on a monster again, so he applies the sleep effect that makes the monster sleep, and when poisoning the monster, he thinks that at least he could combine the skills and wonders if the consumption of his natural MP would be affecting him, but to make matters. Worse, he is surprised by a horde of monsters and decides to give them everything he had, so he starts to use his paralysis desperately, which almost makes him faint, but even so, Tuka keeps fighting until he reaches his mental limit, but even so, he decides to use his last use of paralysis on the creature, since he was determined to use the stubbornness of a monster. Supporting character until the end. But Tuka is surprised when he rises to level 258 and with that his stats go up quickly and he recovers his MP completely thanks to the elimination of that first monster that he had poisoned and now he could continue fighting and in this way Tuka manages to level up the paralysis skill and now it was possible to select multiple targets to apply the effect being limited to a certain area and confirms that the rate of his skill it would really be 100% and so he starts poisoning the targets and raises his ability to level 2 and when opening his status he notices that his stats were multiplied by his level and his MP had a drastic increase since his initial MP was already high and at that moment his MP would be his salvation and as soon as the monsters are being eliminated Tuka goes up in level and takes the opportunity to increase his Sono Pro level 2 skill and maybe he can survive this ruin with his power that was able to eliminate everything in his path and even made the remaining monsters run from him and after defeating the monsters Tuka takes the tunic and sword from a skeleton and decides to go after water and food and remembers the monsters he defeated that looked like oxen and chickens, but he can't cut anything from the minotaur and in a moment of desperation he decides to eat the monster's eye, which was not edible, making the boy question if the creature's entire body was made of acid and he admits that this place was really made to destroy anyone, but a different glow in the jewel of his magic item catches his attention and when he puts mana on the stone, he notices that the bag has become heavier and from inside it he takes out a package of dried meat and a soda, which makes him emotional that his item considered useless has produced food, although he does not know how it worked and if he would return to produce. And so several days go by and while looking at various monsters being decimated Tuka thought that this scene was horrible and at that moment he committed a terrifying and completely inhuman act and when he reached LVL 665 he remembers when he was a child and thought that he should put an end to his father if not he would have an end but on this day he was saved by his uncles who gave him normality in addition to the warmth of the family teaching him to be kind and empathize with the pain of others making him think he could become like them but nevertheless he didn't feel anything and wasn't even trembling with fear for taking a life or suffering for it, and since he was only afraid of himself, and as he leveled up he thought that the best thing would be to just accept who he had become, and continues his journey paralyzing and poisoning monsters. But he comes across a different door and when he puts mana in the jewel it opens revealing two adventurers who accepted his end in a noble way, and after praying for them Tuka takes a bag of precious crystals that they had since it could be useful on the surface, and when opening Hall 25 that consumed a lot of his MP, he comes across a body in a tunic, and notices a letter left by him that said. My name is Angelin and people call me Anglin the Great Sage although others know him by the previous name Anglin the Hero of Darkness surprising Tuka by remembering that the goddess had said that this would have been the strongest hero of all and as he continues reading he discovers that the goddess Vicia sent him by force to this place since he was no longer needed and considered him unpleasant. So he wanted to entrust something to the person who wanted to get out of these ruins alive. Which brought him desperately to this place, since his end was near, which fuels Tuka's hatred for the goddess who said that the great demonic empire was evil, but she was much worse, 
although he believed it wasn't much different, since he wanted to take revenge on her and didn't care about saving the world. After all it was evil against evil against evil. And when he opens the bag of the sage Tuka, he finds a book of forbidden arts the complete work that had a recipe for medicines and magic. Tools but in addition he also had a scroll of forbidden magic that Tuka cannot decipher, but if he made an effort to hide it and keep it with him, then it must be a powerful spell that can become his trump card against the goddess, and so he exchanges his cloak with a wise man, and after asking for his forgiveness, he opens the book that contained a message warning him to beware of the one who eliminated all the soul eater. So Tuka continues his journey and finds a door that seemed to need something to open it, and maybe it will take him to the surface which meant that it was nearby, and even the hero considered the strongest of all succumbed to this monster, and is faced with a huge growl that was with what he needed to open the door stuck in his forehead, and surely that would be the devourer of souls then Tuka tries to use his paralysis but the monster attacks, him quickly preventing the boy from speaking the name. Of the ability since his attack was activated at the moment he began to have intentions to attack him, and wonders what he should do since ending it seemed very difficult, after all he needed to speak the name of the ability to activate the inflict status conditions, and to make matters worse this would be his range limit, and wonders if he should improve his stats to overcome him, which he discards since he couldn't even activate his ability, and Tuka is surprised by the monster that comes out of the wall which he should have waited for. Since this creature was the one who finished off the man considered the strongest, and this must be the reason for the zero rate of survivors among the discarded, but at least that would be his fight final for her life in the runes of discard against the monster that dominated her. But meanwhile outside, an elf wondered if they would be able to wait for them in the ancient ruin. And we return to Tuka who observes the monster creating something and admits that these creatures were horrendous and to make matters worse the creature was showing the last expression of the eliminated discarded since he wanted to see his reaction and that must be how the soul eater had fun and admits that all the monsters in this place tasted horrible and next to him appears the devourer who starts screaming and Tuka paralyzes the monsters while the devourer laughed at him who refused to use poisoning on the creatures and Tuka says that even though they are no longer alive he could not do this to other people and remembers all the skeletons in the labyrinth while questioning how he could use his horrible ability on other people, and in the midst of despair he continues to say that he did not fall so low and was not like the monster he used human souls as toys and could not do anything against those who looked human and who never did anything wrong, after all he was still a human. And when Tuka starts to cry the monster creates even more monsters while Tuka went into despair saying that they were the same and everyone was human so they should move away and notice that the monster was enjoying his despair savoring him as if he had found the best trapped and when Tuka begins to beg for someone to save him, the monster begins to delirious entering a state of ecstasy reaching his peak of happiness. But the monster is surprised when Tuka uses his paralysis on him and he says that this must have been the best moment of the creature's life and that he dreamed so much that made him lower his guard and he didn't even realize that he never lowered his left arm leaving the monster desperate while he said that this was the worst flaw of those who were arrogant in their own strength and when they were convinced that he was superior and that his victory was inevitable he got lost in his overconfidence and so his paralysis rises to level 3, and Tuka asks if the monster didn't think it was a good staging what he was sure after all he spent days, months and even years trying to become harmless, normal and kind and managed to deceive himself by forgetting how he really was because he always had to keep acting like Mamori Tuka the character with a gentle and normal background while everyone showed their hostility and so he activates his poisoning and keeps saying that even if they were monsters created by him using the soul of the eliminated, he had no reason to contain himself. After all he had to face hostility with hostility in order to crush him completely, and as his own stats were weak, he can underestimate what made him stay alive, and a weak human mirror sent to this place managed to run over even him who had a pathetic end, but Tuka notices that the monster was trying to move by force even while paralyzed and this caused additional damage and poisons him raising. His skill to level 3, as well as the sleep skill used next. And when I destroyed the monster, the souls are freed and appear before the boy, congratulating him for having achieved it and praise his performance in the dungeon. In addition to being worried that he tried to eat a monster, but they hoped that those jewels could help him on the surface and finally Anglin asks him to do something about that goddess and they all disappear then while Tuka said he had no obligation to accept this request. But he didn't have to worry, after all it could take a long time, but he intended to fix that damn goddess and after taking the monster stone, Tuka opens the dungeon door towards his freedom from the ruin of discard. While Tuka was fighting for her life, her classmates were rising in level and thought they were the best for reaching level 18. But a girl questioned what Kabata was doing because if she was right, the class would soon split up, after all, they had several classmates with a huge ego and to make matters worse, everyone received classes from S to E and by the way, a Seiji would be class B and invites Kabato to join her group and starts touching the girl's body while saying that she would definitely not join Kirihara's group after all. 
She was class D so she should think better about her position since by defeating the demonic empire they would return to their world and perhaps what they achieved in this place would affect their world and even with her terrible skills she could entertain them with her body to help them, but to do so she needed to pass the test that the goddess designated and orders her group to bring the monster that was chained and asks if Kabato wanted to become strong with them or be eliminated like Mamori Tuka and even though she is terrified, she eliminates the monster and becomes one of them but the girl starts crying when she remembers the kindness of Mamori who had saved a cat and asks for forgiveness for not being able to help him. But meanwhile Sogu Ayak woke up after the punch he received from the goddess and found her in a room where the goddess regretted what happened to Mamori, but this was a firm policy of the kingdom of Alien and apologized sincerely, but now they had no time to be sad after all the ritual was still in progress, and while she was sleeping the others took part in a test to determine if they could eliminate monsters and several of her colleagues were unable to defend themselves and were disqualified. So they had to withdraw making AYK question whether she was saying they needed to eliminate the weak, which the goddess confirms, after all, this was Alien's policy, leaving AYK furious when she admitted that she didn't agree with the way she did things, making the goddess laugh when she told her that the world was full of different opinions and how a goddess she tolerated them all so she was willing to accept her point of view, but even so they needed to get rid of what had no value and that's why AYK questions whether an S-class hero was valuable to her which Viseus confirms, so she decides to make one proposal where she would fulfill her duty as an S-class heroine, but in return she would stop with the discards. A proposal that the goddess found worthy of an S-class heroine, and as a sign of reconciliation she suggests that they shake hands and apologizes for having thrown a punch in herself to calm her hysteria, and even reluctantly AYK holds the hand of the goddess who says she has great hopes for her as she noticed that the goddess's hands were very cold. And in the dark forest an elf ran from the group who thought she had lost the trail, but she was wrong as the group of sacred vigilantes were tracking her eager to capture her and have fun with the girl before finishing her off. But in the meantime Tuka finally came out of the discard ruin, and when checking his status he noticed that he was at level 1789 and considered only his MP incredible, after all he had 59,000 points, but what he really wanted to check were the new characteristics of his level 3 paralysis where it allowed him to paralyze multiple targets, cancel and partially cancel the effect as well as poisoning which could have a non-lethal characteristic, which he decides to test if he encounters a monster. But for now he needed to find a sword or someone who can act as a tank to take care of from the front line and ends up coming across a group of slimes attacking a smaller slime who is fighting for his life and his determination ends up touching the boy who paralyzes the slimes and poisons them, but changes the setting to non-lethal and cancels the paralysis of the bigger slimes to send them away away, and tells the little one that he was about to undo his paralysis and as he had no intention of eliminating him he needed to worry or attack him and in fact he wanted to apologize for meddling in his battle which left him surprised to see him fighting bravely to defend himself, but now he needed to go and says goodbye to the slime that starts following him so took a questions if he would continue following him and decides to take him after all he was someone who didn't fit into this world like him. And after a while Tuka starts reading the book of forbidden arts and is happy because now he would have eyes in the rear and a page with an experiment to strengthen monsters catches his attention, and he notices it had a description of how to improve slimes and probably Anglin was afraid that this was used for evil and tells the slime that he was seeking good old revenge so if he wants to stay by his side he would have to align himself with his ego which the slime agrees with Tuka even suggests that he leaves but the slime denies it and he decides to call him Pigamaru leaving the slime excited about his new name while Tuka thought he would use everything he could to crush that goddess in order to have his revenge. But in the meantime, the sacred vigilantes began to approach the elf who decides to invoke her spiritual attire and offers her sleep as part of the payment, and in this way she prepares herself for combat against sacred vigilantes, who surrounded Tuka who appears to be terrified while they said that they were disgusted just looking at the boy and ordered him to leave all his valuables so that they could spare his life. Which one of the men refused to do as he wanted to test the cutting of his new sword in a human, and it could be in this trash bag and Zarash tells him to be quick after all the girl would run out of energy soon and Ashura says that as he was a man this would be quick after all they wouldn't have fun before. Eliminating him so they should end it soon to capture the woman and use the money in an adult entertainment house or better yet they could get a pretty girl from the next town to have fun leaving Tuka irritated while they argued about how fun it would be to do whatever they want with that elf and Tuka continues with his performance and manages to raise his hand and when May gets tries to attack him Tuka activates his paralysis, confirming that his status conditions were also effective on humans. And maybe only that damn goddess is immune to it, and says that they were not intimidating like the monsters from the ruins, but their malice was equal or worse than theirs. They were nothing more than a bunch of trash and even their slime was angry and Tuka said that hostility must be paid with hostility which meant he could eliminate humans leaving them terrified when the boy activates his poisoning and after killing them he feels something ahead. 
And meanwhile the elf was wondering if they had hidden the presence, but she felt something approaching, although she wasn't sure about this feeling that had a weak and unsettling presence that left the spirit scared and cuts the bush behind her where the slime runs away and Tuka uses his paralysis leaving the girl motionless while he said he felt her intention to attack, but there was also something mixed with his hostility that made him curious. And that's why he wanted to talk to her although. He leaves her motionless as a precaution leaving the girl curious about his objective and him he responds that he was lost after all he wasn't from this place so he hoped she could help him clear up some doubts and the girl asks about the other four and Tuka asks if they were her friends which she denies so the boy removes the paralysis from his mouth and he apologizes for still keeping her in that state but he still didn't trust her as. She went through a lot of things so she didn't trust. Strangers easily, and the girl replies that before answering her question she would like to confirm something, and asks where the group of four people were that he found and took a response that he eliminated them leaving the girl surprised that he managed to eliminate the sacred vigilantes, and asks if he had other allies with him and took a response that only one, but he wouldn't reveal it so the girl thanks him for the answers and how she didn't feel any falsehood in his words, she promises to answer. His doubts honestly just like him who in a way would be her savior making Tuka realize that she seemed very confident in her ability to identify lies, and says that she seemed like a good person at least until now making the girl ask if this meant that he had gained some of his trust which he agrees with, but even so there were still things that he preferred not to comment on which the girl also preferred and in this way Tuka discovers that. She was not an alien but in the forest from the south. In the kingdom of ULZA and finally he asks if she could read what was on that parchment but the girl denies it and notes that it seemed to be an ancient and very peculiar writing but she knew someone who might be able to and she was known as the witch of taboos who was considered dangerous because she had such vast knowledge of what was forbidden in this world that she ended up being expelled from her homeland and now lived in the land of golden-eyed monsters, a very dangerous area in the center of the continent and Tuka thanks her for the valuable tip. Despite that the girl doesn't consider that she managed to pay off her debt with him who saved her life, but he responds that they were tied and now they were going to separate, and he thinks that she had a real sense of honor and for better or worse she was very honest, and it even reminded him of his aunt who was so nice that she even made him worry about her, and says that she would soon be free but he couldn't guarantee her. Safety until then, which the girl understood and Tuka said that she would pray for her safe journey despite to have ambushed her. And so he leaves and goes back to walking with his slime and says that he wouldn't eliminate someone for no reason, after all he only did it according to his own rules, but he couldn't deny that there was a possibility that she would come after him after the effect wore off so he asked the slime to keep an eye on. But meanwhile in a city people were making several nasty comments about the reward they were offering for a paladin from NEAH who was defeated by Bacchus, as well as being the princess of that ancient nation of half-elves Sarah's ashr 8 n Tuka easily enters the city of MILS thanks to the Marquis who was organizing an exploration of the ruins, and after registering at the inn called Hattie Skull, he decides to explore the city which had several shops typical of a fantasy world, but the best place would be the tavern which had great food, but what was really important would be the conversations out loud. After all it was the best way to collect information, and a group discussed the powerful armies of other nations, such as the Brilliant Brigade. The Order of the White Wolves and the strongest of the continent the Knights of the Black Dragon who had the strongest of humanity and the hero hunter in his unit but Tuka decides to return to his room and starts thinking about future plans and as a priority he should find the Witch of Taboos who was in the land of golden-eyed monsters and would be the one who could read the forbidden magic scroll and there was also that monster. Enhancement solution that could be done with. Pigamaru but for that it was necessary to create a solution using powdered bone from a skeleton king and its habitat would be the ruins by MILS making Tuka remember the tavern where they commented that the city had become very busy since the Marquis requested the conquest of the new floor discovered in the ruins. The next day Tuka goes to the ruin where the Marquis announces that the objective would be the dragon's eye chalice and whoever brought it would receive 300 gold coins and regarding the monster items they were free to use as they wish. Which means that Tuka could have the Skeleton King's bone powder, and in the registration queue an adventurer starts to pester a girl catching Tuka's attention, while the man said that she must definitely be someone renowned because she is so beautiful and her. Voice resembles with that of a certain paladin captain drawing everyone's attention to the possibility of being Sarah's ASHRAIN of the Holy Empire of NEH the former captain of the knights who had a price on her head in addition to being the elf captain of the order, and that man continues to provoke the girl after all. He met the captain once and she was very pretty and she treated him with disdain despite having invited her to dinner, and the girl replies that she didn't remember meeting him and he says that she had the same reaction at the time and ignored him with total disinterest, but thanks to that his face was recorded in his mind as well as his beautiful balloons, but the girl says again that he must be confusing her so the man responds that in that case she just needed to show her ears after all the elves ears were pointy, and as everyone knew the former captain of a certain country was running away and was a high elf known as the princess knight and when he removes the girls. 
Hoodie is surprised to realize that her ears were normal making everyone laugh at him and Tuka the recognizes her as the girl from the forest while the adventurer was in disbelief that her face was also different and the girl introduces herself as Miss Belukas and asks if he was satisfied, generating several comments in the queue that make the man furious. And then Tuka passes by the girl who recognizes him and asks if he also came for the call and he responds that it was more or less that and in fact what happened to her was a pain, but she didn't consider it a big problem despite Tuka advising that she was careful since that man was enraged, but the girl was already used to it after all it was easier when they hated her and stayed away instead of trying to get closer and Tuka replied that she understood that she was trying to avoid interactions but she had a request and would pay for it. For her to help him buy some items to explore the ruins since that way he wouldn't be deceived which she agrees after all they needed money, and after introducing themselves with their pseudonyms Tuka or rather Hattie says that he had already understood that she was using a false name, and as they both had their secrets they would have no reason to say their real names which the girl agrees to, and so they go shopping and the girl is surprised by the high price he paid for her help, but he says that was what she helped him save and even reluctantly she decides to accept his payment, and after thanking him she says she needed to go but ends up falling and Tuka notices that she has dark circles under her eyes and the girl replies that she just hasn't slept properly for a few days, but everything was fine well and apologizes for worrying him and leaves but now Tuka could start conquering the ruins of MILS. So the next day he enters the ruins and notices a group running from a small bull demon that was smaller than the one in the discard ruins and eliminates it without any difficulty, after all its skin was less resistant, but a while later the adventurers return and are left in disbelief. That someone defeated it with just one blow and Tuka continues the exploration despite not gaining much experience with these monsters so he would advance quickly, but a conversation catches his attention, and he hears that man in line ordering two men to do that woman who humiliated him in the square regret having been born, and when she begs for her life they should use her as food for the monsters, and while laughing Tuka goes to them, and says that they were a group without salvation, and the Adventurer questions who he thought he was talking to then Tuka raises his hand and begins his performance by apologizing and to spare his life, making the man laugh because he is begging for his life and says that it was a shame since he couldn't go back and attacks Tuka, who uses his paralysis leaving everyone without understanding what was happening, and he admits that his own villainy made him want to vomit but it would probably be because they reminded him of his past and he applies the Poison to everyone after all eliminating people like them was strangely pleasant, and the man promises that he would do it he regrets this but Tuka starts laughing and asks if he was stupid after all there was a reason to be beating him up in that place, and as he leaves a group of monsters appears, and Tuka says that it looks like they were the ones who became monster food. And so he goes to the new floor but decides to take a break and returns to the previous floor, and after a nap a group warns him that there was something unusual in the ruin where the monsters seemed to have been eliminated in a strange way and all the monsters whether they were strong or weak ones had pale skin and the same happened on floor 14 where they were the first to arrive and they invite him to return to the surface with them. After all they didn't know what was happening but Tuka thanks him for his offer and says he would continue and as soon as they withdraw he thinks that they must be talking about the monsters that he eliminated with his skill and if the news of this spread it would be better for him who finds the dragon's eye chalice. But he was sure that that statue next to the chalice would move, so he used his paralysis along with the poisoning, and as soon as the monster was eliminated his slime warned him that someone had arrived, and in fact it was Mist who said he thought he would be the first who would arrive at this place since the others retreated, but perhaps he missed his chance to rest after tangling with a bunch of monsters. But Tuka says that if she wanted she could have the chalice, surprising the girl who asks what he wanted in return after all. 300 gold was a lot and he responds that he didn't have anything he really wanted and the girl says she couldn't tarnish his honor like that and Tuka responds that she seemed in a hurry but needed to sleep properly and in the end she looked like she was going to faint at any moment and says goodbye to the girl who insists again that she couldn't accept without offering anything and Tuka responds that Hattie Skull was an extremely sweet and kind guy with beautiful women and she says that he was lying but Tuka finds a secret passage and says that her objective it wasn't this treasure but a monster that was down there, leaving the girl surprised as she imagined that this was the last floor discovered and he explains that there was a monster that had what he needed and this call just coincided with his time in the place making her admit that it made sense and decides to ask him to at least allow her to protect him since at the moment what she could offer was her skill with the sword and promises that it wouldn't be a burden after all she couldn't just accept the cup for free, and how she didn't seem like she was going to give up Tuka decides to accept, but with some conditions which would be not to ask questions about each other's circumstances, and she could return to the surface whenever she wanted since he didn't know how long he would stay down there, but he wouldn't be responsible. For her which Mist accepts and promises to protect him even at the cost of his life.
And so the two go down the stairs and Tuka asks about the monsters with golden eyes and she explains that these monsters had a lot of experience and were recognized as the perfect prey for heroes from the other world to level up and asks if he knew the concept of a hero from another world which Tuka agrees with. Then the girl says that apparently these heroes didn't gain experience by eliminating people and it seems that experience was an exclusive resource of monsters, which in a way, Explained why Tuka didn't receive anything for eliminating those group and he asks how monsters without golden eyes were treated and the girl replies that they were considered common monsters and some were capable of having a good relationship with humans and according to legend the demon king who is the root of all evil radiates an energy known as the essence of the demon king and the most influenced monsters had golden eyes that released the violent instinct that all monsters possessed. Making Tuka think about the monsters with golden eyes and makes a connection with gold reaching a golden hero, and perhaps this golden hue could be a sign which was a bit ominous. But even so, they continue their journey to a restroom. But before entering the girl comments that she was feeling the presence of a monster, and as it wasn't strong, she didn't pay any attention but continued to feel it. So Tuka introduces her partner Pigyumru, making the girl admit that he it was a very beautiful slime and its feeling was strangely comforting and Tuka says that now they should take a break and advises her to get some sleep but the girl refuses and says that everything was fine so Tuka asks her to at least lie down for a while now that it would be a problem for him if she fainted on the way, making her agree to lie down. So Pigyumaru starts to distract the girl, and Tuka uses her sleep ability to put her to sleep so she could rest a little, but a light emanates from her body of the girl revealing her true appearance, and as Tuka suspected she really was the ex capita of the sacred empire of Ni Sarah's ashr But in the meantime Civet Cartland Humanity's strongest and member of the Black Dragon Riders wonders if Sarah's ashr with her spirit suit could have eliminated the four holy vigilantes so quickly, and maybe she can be more fun than he imagined. Mist wonders how he fell asleep since the pact is not yet expired and when Tuka pretends to have woken up he says that they should go back to exploring and finally they arrive in the master's room who suddenly appears and Tuka notices that he was much stronger than the other's monsters from this dungeon and Mist says that this monster was so strong that an ordinary soldier could not deal with it and Tuka realizes that the monster only considered Mist as a threat and the girl asks him to keep secret about the power he was about to use that granted him an improvement in his skills as well as exclusive equipment, and asked him to flee if necessary as he didn't know if he could defend him while he was fighting, and when the monster was about to attack them Tuka paralyzes and poisons him, leaving the girl in disbelief that he defeated him in seconds, and after defeating him Tuka takes what he came for and promises that when he reaches the surface he would answer the girl's doubts who asked if his face had given her away but Pigamaru catches Tuka's attention, who finds an egg wrapped in a type of magical fabric, and as the slime seemed interested he decided to take it to the surface with them. But in the meantime, Tuka's former colleagues were facing skeleton knights with great difficulty and AYAK tries to buy time for her colleagues to escape, but Oyamata and Kirihara defeat them without caring if their blows would hit their colleagues, but AYAK manages to save them while Kirihara was left finding himself the strongest for reaching level 24. But we return to the dungeon, and after Mist delivers the cup she goes to Tuka, and says that she would receive her reward the next day at a reception, so she would stay at the inn for another night, and that's why Tuka asks her to meet him in his room at night that he would like to talk to her alone which the girl agrees and so the knight arrives and Tuka finishes the monster enhancement solution that she decides to test later after all mist had already arrived and Tuka starts saying that he wanted to hire her as a bodyguard since he thought she wanted to earn more money, although she may have decided to travel with the reward of the chalice, which Tuka thought was a dirty trick since it was making her indirectly remember the chalice and continues saying that as she knew. Her objective was to find the Witch of the Taboos in the land of golden-eyed monsters, and as he had the possibility of encountering many monsters he would feel better if he had a talented swordsman protecting him just like in the ruins after all, he always thought about hiring a warrior to guarantee his safety. And she fit perfectly into that, and Mist replies that she was on a journey to the Duchy of Yanato so if it was through the land of golden-eyed monsters it would be very convenient for her but Tuka notices that she seemed indecisive and decides to say that she didn't need to rush into the decision since they had other routes to Yanato and asks if he could ask her something but he calls her Sarah's and the girl automatically agrees. 
Getting nervous when she realizes that he already knew who she was and took her explains that she found out when she fell asleep in the ruin with her ability, and asks if she was hesitant because she thought about revealing who she was since traveling together and trying to hide her identity would be a problem. After all she couldn't sleep in that form which she agrees with so Tuka says she needed her combat skills so she had no intention of selling her and Sarah's explains who used the power of the spirits to hide her identity in exchange for her desire to sleep and after being caught off guard she began to be chased by the sacred vigilantes and as he got rid of them she had much more flexibility in traveling in shows. Her true identity and Tuka says that if she was cancelling his spell then she should assume that she trusted him which she agrees with so he decides to repay her and says that her real name would be Tuka Mamori, but asks her not to tell anyone, but in reality he was just using trust to bind her even more to him and in this way Sarah's introduces herself and agrees to be her bodyguard to the lands of the golden-eyed monsters and as payment Tuka gives a blue gem that she found in the disposal ruin. To the girl who says no could I accept it, after all, this was a blue dragon gem, a jewel that was rarely born within the legendary blue-eyed dragons and there was none circulating on the market currently, so its value easily surpassed the reward of the chalice, which Tuka didn't care about, but the girl warned him right away. That he shouldn't give something like that so lightly, but even so he insists that she keep the jewel after all it was enough payment to protect him and if he didn't want it he could throw it away making the girl accept, but she warns him that as she was on the run there were many things about her that he hasn't told yet and Tuka responds that he wasn't investigating her past and as a contractor he just wanted her to be in her best. Shape as a guard and Sarah's says that he was very attentive and returns to the room where she thinks that she wanted to believe him just like she did with the princess. And the next day Tuka asks her not to pay attention to the nasty comments in the tavern, and asks if she knew anything about forbidden magic, and the girl replies that according to the goddess Viseus these forbidden magics were ancient spells, making Tuka realize that these spells they were only prohibited because the goddess decided and maybe because they were dangerous for her, and he thanks the girl for his help who admits that she was embarrassed because he thanked her sincerely and arranges. To meet him after lunch after receiving her reward so Tuka goes to the forest and begins the enhancement experiment with Pigamaru while at the reception party the duke received a specialist in breaking illusions to identify whether the chalice brought by Mist was legitimate, leaving the girl distressed while Tuka noticed that she was late. But let's go to Alien's castle where the goddess said she knew that AYK and her colleagues went through delicate moments with the skeleton knights, and in fact she didn't need to worry about Sakura since she would put her hand back even though she can't use it and anyone would then just cure her because she is class B and asks if she would join Kirihara's group which AYK denies after all she didn't believe she would get along with. Kirihara now, and the goddess says that her selfishness was disturbing the harmony of her class, or at least that's what she heard. Leaving AYK indignant but the goddess says that everything was fine after all it was the result of insufficient guidance on her part and AYK apologizes, but even though it was selfish she couldn't join Kirihara by doing the goddess questions whether she would think that even if it means turning her back on a world that seeks salvation, and AYK responds that she was fulfilling her duty as an S-class heroine in her own way, which the goddess agrees with, and that is why she would trust the students who were unable to eliminate monsters for her, since if an S-class trained them they would become as strong as a hundred men, leaving the girl distressed to question whether they had not resolved this issue when she agreed to fight in their place, and the goddess responds that unfortunately she received a royal decree asking her to elimination of all the heroes who couldn't fight and she couldn't change that order so if she refused she would have to get rid of them leaving AYK with no way out but to agree but before she left the goddess said that if they became an obstacle she would be forced to face a cruel reality but everything would certainly be fine since humans became stronger when facing reality and as soon as the girl leaves the goddess shows her dissatisfaction with that brat. 
But we return to Tuka who is still waiting for Sarah's and asks the slime if he also thought something happened which he agrees so Tuka decides to go after the girl, after all she had no reason to abandon them, and listens to some comments about the woman who found the chalice that would actually be the fugitive knight princess who fled to the dark forest and watches the black dragon knights heading towards the forest. While the girl faced the dragons and with the ability of the spirits she managed to defeat some knights while thinking that due to the illusion breaking, her spirit of light was disoriented and therefore could not transform and wondered what the level of the superior knights would be. Since the mediums were already very strong and a blade is thrown at the girl who manages to defend herself and notices that that dragon on her back was just a decoy since the real enemy was in front of her who attacks him and the man praises her for noting him and introduces himself as Gizan, the vice captain of the squad led by Orban of the five dragons and begins to pressure Sarah's, who says that he had thought they would try to capture her, but it seems that they decided to eliminate her making. The man admit that his team had orders secrets and starts looking at the body of the girl who knew she needed her costume to deal with this enemy, but Sarah's ends up losing her balance which gives the opening that Gizan needed to disarm the girl who says that if he was going to eliminate her it should be quick, but the man responds that first he would have fun with her and he would discover what a real man was. But Sarah's ends up being saved by Tuka who paralyzes him as well as the dragon, and says that she was late and then poisons them both, but uses a non-lethal effect on the soldier, and the girl asks him what he was doing there, and he replies that he came looking for. There and puts the soldier to sleep since they could end up saying things that no one can hear and Sarah's says that if he continued with her, he would also be chased by the knights, and returns the payment he gave her to cancel the agreement but Tuka responds that this really it would be a headache which the girl agrees with, but he says that wasn't what he was talking about and throws the bag of jewels to the girl who is impressed with the amount while he says it would be a headache to look for a guard as strong as her and tells Sarah's to take off her clothes. As people from MILS have already seen Sarah's with that outfit Tuka offers other clothes to the girl who is relieved, but questions why he is still acting as if the agreement is still valid and Tuka responds that he had a new proposal and suggests that she negotiate an order of asylum with the Witch of Taboos after all no one found out where she lived and how he was going to the land of monsters alone to learn about ancient. Writing it would be convenient for her who asks why he was helping her. And he replies that her appearance reminded him of her of a person who had the same aura, and if he abandoned her it would be the same as abandoning his aunt making her admit that he was a kind person, and then Tuka goes to the night and removes his sleeping condition, and says that if he answers the questions he would have mercy leaving the night furious while Sarah's asked who wanted to eliminate her making the man admit that he wanted to see how a high elf who swore her sword to the holy. Empire would react upon discovering the truth, but he is silenced by a spear that eliminates him leaving Tuka distressed to realize that the one with white armor and red eyes was Sivit, the strongest of humanity, and to make matters worse he was out of his reach. Four of the five dragons stand before them and Sivit reveals that the one who ordered the work would be Ordala, who was overcome by despair and even considered letting her escape, but the possibility of Sarah's being desecrated by another man drove him crazy, proposing that they eliminate her at any time. Cost leaving the girl in shock and one of the knights questions how they should deal with Sarah's since your majesty let them choose and considers the idea of handing her over to his subordinates as a prize before eliminating her which would be a problem after all the emperor asked to take his body with its purity intact. But Sivit decides to make a dual proposal, and if she wins he could live after all he was satisfied with the opportunity to test his spirit costume in combat, or was that what he thought after all he was more interested in the young man next his side and asks his name leaving Tuka cornered when he recognizes that this man was more dangerous than the soul eater and Sivit questions why he is laughing making Tuka remember his bad habit. But in any case he introduces himself as Hattie Skoll and Sivit notices that it would be a pseudonym and SCHWEZ questions why he is wasting time with. The boy and Sivit asks if he didn't think it was strange that the boy didn't feel afraid. In front of the five dragons.
Besides waiting for an opening to attack them, and even knowing that a move wrong could eliminate him he kept smiling and talking making Tuku admit that he was intelligent so he needed to go with caution otherwise everything would be over in the blink of an eye, and ask if he was looking for a target to satisfy him which Sivit agrees so Tuka continues saying that they shouldn't have many opponents with superhuman strength like the goddess of Alien and Sivit responds that her land and alien had a close relationship and admits that she had great expectations in the heroes from another world that she invoked after all her blessing allowed them to achieve the peak of strength quickly and certainly one day they would become worthy opponents who would fight against him making took a notice that he was overflowing with self-confidence since his only desire was to find and fight powerful opponents but civet ends up losing interest in the boy so at least would hand over his head to the princess of any age and Sarah's wonders if he would do that to the princess, but Sivit tells her to shut up after all that was the reason Bacchus changed his stance and invaded any age leaving the girl surprised while the knight tells her not to act surprised after all he already knew of this since their goddess ordered them to hand over their little paladin which any age refused and Sivit says that even though the two are weak they should go to him although he would prefer that they had the power to eliminate him leaving took a confident in his survival bet and asks what he thought about accepting him as the opponent who could threaten his life after all he had said that those blessed by the goddess would soon reach the peak of strength and introduces himself as took a memory a hero from another world leaving everyone surprised while civet said that now everything made sense and he questions what he was doing in this place and took realizes that civet was capable of sensing lies so he decides to change the story saying that he had a unique position even among the heroes and that's why he was acting alone on orders from the goddess which didn't it was a lie after all he was the only class e and he continues saying that as he was on a different level they sent him to this place alone leaving civet interested in the man that even the goddess recognized as special and questions what she wanted with him and took her replies that she wanted a postponement since that way he would become stronger than anyone and gain enough power to defeat that goddess and in this way he could eliminate him and civet questions how he intended to get stronger and took a response that he would go to the land of golden-eyed monsters following a different path from the other hero after all the goddess gave him this freedom and in any case he intended to return to her making civet realize that this meant that he would not disappear and as he would like to see his growth in a battle for life he agrees to leave him alive and could leave without worrying and after silencing sarah's they would also leave but tuka tells him to wait and says he needed her power to get to the land of monsters after all he was going to use her to get stronger leaving civet excited by accepting his proposal to leave sarah's alive and his companion tries to warn him but civet says that tuka needed her to become strong and they could eliminate her after the duel and if he continues talking he would eliminate him, leaving the knight terrified and asks SCHWZ to warn Grimm that no one could touch both of them and admits that the first act of Tuka surpassed his imagination and was an excellent introduction to the next step that left him looking forward to the day they would face each other. And when flying with his dragon he notices the boy smiling and Tuka realizes that he won his bet after all he was in his reach, and with it he paralyzes everyone and takes the four dragons to the ground leaving Civet furious while Tuka apologized but had no intention of prolonging things with the strongest of humanity, after all this was not a pretty story but a story of revenge and they were nothing more than a risk for him so he would eliminate them and poison everyone who started to struggle. And Tuka recognizes that they didn't call him of humanity's strongest act, and it was the second time that someone trying to move was paralyzed, which was self-destructive, and as he had never seen anyone moving so much after receiving his paralysis and poisoning. He decided to stay prepared until everyone was eliminated and activated an ability that spreads across his face, but a signal for the squad is activated from the body of one of the knights, and the squad goes to them then Tuka says that. Sarah's could run away because he would stay until everyone was eliminated and the girl decides to stay after all she was his bodyguard and Civet tries to order the knights to eliminate them from a distance. 
which was useless and Tuka thinks that they were already linked and there were two problems with this ability. And the first was how long it took to enter that state and the second how you spent your MP while active. And in other words this ability they gained with that monster enhancement solution was for extremely short fights. And with the help of Pigamaru he says they would solve everything at once and the slime reaches the knights and Tuka uses his paralysis knocking them all down since when they were connected the slime became part of him and when he puts them to sleep Tuka gains three abilities that would be freezing darkening, and going crazy and tests the madness by making the knight have a violent outburst and combined with the paralyze the enemy was quickly eliminated and as darkness fell he took the enemy's vision and used the scum as guinea pigs for his new skills reaching level 1797, and after eliminating all of them Tooker admits that Civet was really incredible for still being alive and Civet questions who he was so Tooker, responds that he was not great as a hero who saves the world and in fact was just an Avenger, and in this way the man known as humanity's strongest finds your end. And after Sarah's changes her clothes she says that Tuka had a kind expression, and he replies that maybe it's because he was thinking about someone kind and starts talking about the hero hunter and Sarah's says that he could surpass even Civet and Tuka starts to thinking that the dragons that the five rode were different sizes from the others, and remembers having already crushed the hero hunter previously leaving Sarah surprised that he had defeated him so easily. But meanwhile in the ruins, Ayak wondered when her unique ability would awaken, but Oyamata tried to challenge Nyantan, who came to represent the goddess Viseus, for not accepting orders from someone weaker, but the girl erased him in seconds, leaving Ayak impressed with her speed while Nyantan took them to the royal capital. And we return to Tuka who says that he would use his judgment to eliminate any obstacle to his revenge and Sarah's, says that he could not say that he did not have his feelings about the goddess of Alien, and that is why he should use her strength in the name of his revenge, but Tuka warns that it was a selfish mission, and it was difficult to see justice, honor or conviction that she valued, and Sarah's responds that he risked his life without worrying about the danger to save it so he needed to pay this debt and as long as he believes that it is the correct, she would gladly accept any treatment, making took account on her strength and apologizes to the girl and promises to return the favor to her someday. After all, she always paid her debts, whether they were gratitude or hate. And in the capital the goddess said that Nyantan did a great job observing the heroes, after all she was strong and smart but above all she was loyal, and orders the girl to start licking her foot, and with a smile she says that the day the heroes faced the forces of the great demonic empire were closer than I thought. The soldiers inspecting the ruin of the disposal noticed that the verification crystal hadn't changed color, but since no one ever survived that ruin, they decided to report that everything was normal. Meanwhile, Tuka was buying the mask of the Lord of the Flies, which according to stories, had transformed a monster island into his fortress, where he defended himself from all invasions, becoming the master of the demons condemned to ostracism by the very source of evil. But since he had an impressive end, he became very popular, and since Tuka didn't consider himself a good hero, he decided to wear the mask since a demon seemed more appropriate to crush the goddess. After all, one should not doubt a man who sold his soul. In the kingdom of Magnar, a meeting was taking place where they discussed the elimination of the five dragons, and the goddess Viseus mentioned that the knights were pursuing Sarah's. At the location, they found the girl's clothes torn, and with the red stains, they believed she had been severely injured or possibly eliminated. Regarding NEH, the sacred emperor Ortola lost his life the previous night after going insane, which none of the rulers cared about since he was nothing but a coward who sold his country without a fight. Viseus returned to the subject of the knights, who were the best hope against the great demonic empire, a significant loss for the Holy Alliance. But fortunately, they had their heroes from another world who would play an even more important role. This made the Mad Emperor of Mira, F-A-L-K-N-D-O-T-Z-M-I-N-E, realize that whenever a great evil emerged, Alien always prospered, prompting the goddess to question what he was insinuating. Falcon responded that every time the source of evil appeared, all nations were forced to rely on A-L-I-O-N. The goddess replied that there was nothing to be done since every 
living soul in this world was harmed by the essence of the Demon King. Falcon then asked about the legend of the God Slayer, making the goddess laugh and ask what led him to bring up that story at this moment. But Falcon apologized for interrupting, and one of the kings asked if they thought Sarah's might have eliminated the five dragons. However, a soldier informed them that someone in ULTZ was claiming to have been responsible for eliminating the Black Dragon Knights and called themselves a Shint Curse users. Meanwhile, Sarah's was showing Tuka the Colosseum, where servants and mercenaries fought until eliminated and earned prizes for winning. It was managed by the Duke and the Mercenary Guild, which initially served to evaluate fighters but had now become the people's entertainment. After the conversation, they registered at the inn, where Sarah's blushed when she suggested they share the same room. Afterward, they went to the tavern, where people were gossiping about the rumors that Sarah's ASHRAIN had eliminated the five Black Dragon Knights, but in reality, she had been eliminated. After all, the true culprits were the Ashint, the curse users, catching the attention of Tuka and Sarahs, who explained that they worshipped the god of curses. They were then surprised by the arrival of Ashint soldiers. Tuka noticed they didn't seem like a threat and were probably just taking responsibility for it. The men in the tavern continued talking about people who could face the dragons, mentioning the leopard woman from the Colosseum and the taboo witch, a dark elf. Despite no one having seen her in decades, there was a rumor that someone from the city had once met her. This prompted Tuka to approach the men and ask them to tell him more about it. But first, he offered to serve them two drinks, which excited the men. They then began to talk, saying that the one who met the witch was the strongest warrior in the Colosseum, and Tuka seemed lucky as she had just entered the tavern. Her name was Eve Speed. Of course, Tuka approached her, using his charm to introduce himself as Hattie, a mercenary who wanted to meet her. But Eve asked him to get straight to the point, as he probably wasn't there because she was a warrior. So Tuka asked if she knew where the taboo witch was, and Eve questioned if he was the type to believe in rumors. Despite having ventured into the lands of the golden-eyed monster, monsters where the witch supposedly lived, Eve claimed she had never met her. Tuka then asked if she was saying she didn't know where the witch was, which Eve confirmed, asking why he was looking for the witch. Tuka replied that it was just curiosity since he dreamed of being a scholar, so he'd love to hire a mercenary to visit the witch. Eve warned him that it wasn't a place one returns from alive, and though it might sound rude, she doubted he would last three days there since he seemed too kind. She advised him to value his life, though this advice might sound empty coming from a warrior like her. After Eve left, Sarah's told Tuka that she was lying, which Tuka had suspected. But with that, they confirmed that Eve knew where the taboo witch was. Returning to their room, Tuka fed Pigamara with food from his world taken from his special item, leaving Sarah's impressed by the delicious taste and the beautiful transparent bag. Tuka began to admire the girl, saying she might seem more attractive because she wasn't from his world, but now they needed to find a way to get the warrior to reveal the witch's location. Sarah suggested they use money since Eve might be able to buy her freedom with it, though it would require a large sum, making Tuka thoughtful. Meanwhile, Eve met with a dark elf and promised to get her out of that place, making her smile. We returned to Sarah's, who showed Tuka her sword moves, making him admit that he understood why Sivet was so eager to fight her. He asked if she had any tricks for hand-to-hand -hand combat, as he relied heavily on his abilities and would benefit from learning. Sarah's admitted it was nostalgic and asked him to come at her, though she blushed while explaining that she wanted him to use his strength to defeat her, which Tuka had understood. When he charged at her, she easily pinned him and began explaining what she had done, becoming embarrassed by being so close and sweaty, which Tuka did mind. After the lesson, Sarah's went to wash the clothes and started smelling Tuka's shirt, admitting that it felt like he was mixed with her and getting embarrassed, though at least no one was watching. But then Tuka appeared behind her, startling the girl, who wondered how long he had been there. She apologized for taking his clothes to wash with hers, explaining that she was used to it. Later, Tuka admired Sarah's sleeping, seeing her true kind face, and thought he should be grateful for her suppressing her emotions to try and become his sword. But Sarah's woke up, and Tooker explained that he couldn't sleep, so she showed him some medicinal herbs. Despite having similar colors, they had opposite effects. One helped with sleep, and the other gave energy and excitement, making the girl blush as she tried to explain. Tuka decided to mix something with hot water, which the girl admitted was delicious. Then they added the medicinal herb, though Sarah's accidentally spilled too much into one of the cups. After drinking, she realized she had used the wrong herb and began to apologize, but Tuka said it wasn't a problem while thinking that he could couldn't calm down. Sarah's asked if there was anything she could do for him, and Tuka began to admire the girl's body and replied that she could sleep since the next day they would gather information.
seduction. Despite being embarrassed, she asked if he was resistant to seduction. Tuka replied that he might be resistant for now since his priority was revenge, making it difficult to focus on anything else. It was holding him back, but when he got his revenge, he could focus on other things. Perhaps it was as if he had been cursed. Could it be like Rudio's curse where the magic wand doesn't rise? Man, that was terrible. Anyway, Sarah's knelt down and promised to help him break that curse, making Tuka happy to have her support. The next day, Sarah's discovered that Eve had been sold to the Colosseum, and since leopard men were rare, she became very popular and hadn't lost a single battle in three years. The next day would be her final fight, making Tuka wonder if this meant she had earned enough to buy her freedom, which would make it harder to use money to negotiate. But Sarah's said that she had actually earned her freedom two years ago, and was now trying to buy a child's freedom. She also discovered that most champions were eliminated during their final matches, which Tuka had heard about. He asked if it was because they faced challenging opponents in the final, which Sarah's denied, as there were rumors that the Duke who managed the Colosseum put champions at a disadvantage. This made Tuka excited, as it could be useful for them. Tuka decides they wouldn't wait until the day of the fight. After all Eve was extremely popular, so the Duke must have been planning to eliminate her to pass the baton to the next generation. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to help us reach our goal of 2,000 subscribers, and to keep receiving the next episodes all you need to do is like and comment a lot, that really motivates me to continue making daily videos. Now let's get to the anime. Tuka finds Eve and says he knew she had lied about the witch questioning if she had a debt with her which Eve denies, but Sarah says she was lying putting Eve on alert. Tuka then says it would be better if they stopped deceiving each other prompting Eve to ask what his objective was. He responds that he wanted to save her from the Duke who would make her be defeated the next day, and he was helping because he couldn't allow someone with information about the Witch of Taboos to lose their life. He then suggests they take the girl she was protecting and escape together, which angers Eve who tells him not to touch her. But Tuka replies that he only wanted to show that he knew she was fighting for LIS. Eve thanks them for the warning about the plot, but says she can't flee since they had nowhere to go as the Duke would hunt them down and put a price on their heads unless they follow the rules to gain freedom. Tuka then suggests they hide where the Witch of Taboo's lives who might shelter them, but Eve thinks it's impossible since no one could reach the heart of the monster's land. This makes Tuka realize that she spoke as if she had already been there, and he says that if they work together they might succeed seed promising to protect Elias with all he has. However Eve acknowledges that her swordswoman seemed skilled unlike him who responds that he had some skill with magic and was good enough to defeat a skeleton king with ease which does not impress Eve. Then Tuka reveals that he was the one who eliminated the five dragons and Eve says that was impossible. Tuka paralyzes her and advises her not to move or she would get hurt which leaves Eve irritated as he says that this was the power that allowed a weakling like him to eliminate Civet Gartland. As additional Additional proof Sarah's reveals her true identity, leaving Eve surprised. Tuka then says it is up to her to decide whether she will trust them and deactivates her paralysis, making her acknowledge that he indeed had power, but it wouldn't matter since she wasn't going to the monster land because she would win her freedom with her own hands. Besides, she couldn't fully trust them. Sarah says her lord only wanted to save her which makes Eve ask if she would believe someone she had just met instead of trusting the arena sport where she had a long history. Tuka expected this and asks if she thought the Duke would keep his word if she won given he had heard rumors about him being a scoundrel and found it hard to believe someone like that would grant her freedom. Eve responds that she knew he wasn't a very upright man but he had always honored his part when she delivered results and doubted he was as ruthless as Tuka suggested. Tuka calls her naive and asks if she was saying this just to convince herself, but regardless he wishes her victory and if she changes her mind they plan to leave the city in the morning leaving Eve pensive. As they return to the inn they pass by the Ashints who say that the residents of that house were cursed for challenging Mwaji. Tuka hears a woman say that the man in that house was foaming at the mouth and scratching his own throat as he lost his life. Tuka tells Sarah's that they really believed they were responsible for eliminating the five dragons, but here's the group trying to take a girl by force. When Sarah's was about to intervene Tuka uses Madden to make them start hitting each other. The next morning they wait for Eve and Sarah's asks if he really thought there was a future where Eve would win her freedom and live happily with a girl which Tuka denies saying that there was no happy ending for them in this place at least until someone comes with a poison strong enough to neutralize the existing one. Meanwhile Eve thinks she has fulfilled more than her obligations to Duke Zuan who would show mercy but she decides to confirm if she would be free upon winning the fight. She ends up overhearing the Duke saying that Eve would be eliminated according to tradition, and they just needed to give her the paralyzer and the chalice, 
so that the new champion could defeat her and skin her selling it as the leopard exterminator. Regarding the dark elf the duke planned to take her inside the Colosseum, believing she would be a beauty someday, and when he got tired of her he would simply sell her. This infuriates Eve realizing that Lis could only escape if she rescued her. As she starts walking again Mwaji the leader of the Ashints notices her, and says he was looking forward to her fight, but one of his servants informs him they are in trouble. Eve continues walking and reaches the bridge where she meets Tuka who admits she arrived earlier than he expected. She says it was just as he had said and Tuka asks if he could assume she was going to the monster land with them, to which Eve agrees to show them where the witch lived, and with that they set out to rescue the little girl. The girl was being called useless, and a woman comments that someone important agreed to by her. The woman starts beating the girl making her cry as she remembers Eve promising to win freedom for both of them so she needed to be strong. Noticing she stopped crying the woman says she knew what the girl hated most and begins screaming and threatening her. The little one apologizes to Eve for being weak but is suddenly surprised by Eve, who says she didn't know the woman was so bad, but that it had come to an end since she would take the girl with her. The woman desperate begins to say that the duke ordered her to discipline the girl harshly, and if she had refused he would have eliminated her. She promises not to say anything about where they were going, and Eve tells the girl they would face another tough journey. Elias responds she would go anywhere with her. Eve tells the woman to say that Eve's speed disappeared out of nowhere and went south looking for Lisbeth, and if she does she will spare her. The woman agrees in tears saying she would never forget her mercy and asks Elias for forgiveness for everything she had done to such a kind child. Tooker appears behind them with the mask of the Lord of the Flies and strikes the wall hard scaring Elias. He apologizes for making such noise and asks the two to move ahead while he resolves something. As soon as they leave he tells the woman that she might have fooled a good person like Eve but her awful acting wouldn't work on him. The woman asks if he really thought he could get away with it given they were challenging the duke who would end him and that filthy beast. As she laughs he says he noticed by the girl's reaction that she must have loved hitting nearby objects and making noise when she was shouting in anger remembering his past while saying it was intolerable for those on the receiving end and any loud noise would remind them of the screams. So he couldn't bear the idea of her living as if nothing had happened after all the horrible things she did to the girl. The woman replies that she was the only one who could save him from the duke and suggests he begs for her forgiveness. Tuka uses paralysis darkness and poison, saying he would make it look like she was the victim of a robbery. She retorts that if he did that he would go straight to hell, but if he spared her he might reach heaven. Tuka replies he was willing to do anything for his goals, so of course he would go to hell just like her. He then rejoins his companions and tells them they are about to enter a dangerous place where they might lose their lives which Elias doesn't mind as long as she is by Eve's side. Eve decides to ask about the noise that followed him so Tuka introduces them to Pigamaru. With everything settled they advance through the forest, and Eve asks what he wanted with the Witch of Taboos, and if he intended to harm her which Tuka denies saying he would not harm her unless she harmed him. He just wanted to find her because he had a forbidden magic scroll written in ancient script that she was rumored to be able to read. Eve says she is a simple woman and cannot see the future like he can, but she would like to dedicate her body to him making Tuka admit that was a great leap of trust. She replies that she believes he is a trustworthy man as he could have chosen an inhumane way to get the information about the witch like using the girl, but he did not. Tuka asks if she hadn't said she didn't trust people she had just met, and Eve replies she learned that trust isn't determined by the time spent with someone making took a smile. And so they begin to ride and Sarah's asks if it was okay to bring the girl along. Tuka replies that he would protect her no matter what happens, and would do everything to get them to the witch. Sarah's admits he is really kind, but Tuka asks her not to give him too much credit since he also had a reason to keep them in the group. Eve had been to the monster land before and had some connection to the witch which would make it easier to approach her. As for Elias they say the witch was a dark elf so she would be grateful for saving someone of her kind, and with these cards they they would make a good impression leaving Sarah's impressed. But beyond his own interests Tuka also wanted Elias to enjoy life with a smile instead of crying. Further ahead, they encounter two groups searching for them. Tuka wonders how they were discovered so quickly, 
and Eve explained she passed by a man before leaving the Colosseum, which was Mwaji the head of the Ashints. As they were in danger because of her she decides to face them, but Tuka stops her saying she wouldn't stand a chance against so many people. Besides they couldn't lose the guide to the Witch of Taboos, so they would defeat them with a trap. Sarah's releases the horses with torches tied to them, and notices one of the groups had pursued them. Eve says that those were likely from the Duke's personal army, meaning the second group were the Ashints. Tuka asks her to take LIS and hide in the forest as he needed Sarah's for what he was planning leaving Eve curious about how he would defeat them. Tuka responds that if he couldn't defeat the enemy head-on he just needed to bring them to a place where he could win, and he puts on his mask to start the battle. And this is how we end the 8th episode. Thank you so much to everyone who stayed until the end, and don't forget to support us with your likes, subscriptions, and shares. Thank you and see you next time.